Hey, what's up, Eagles Nation? It's your guy, Go Eagle, back here with another video. I just want to come talk to you guys, man, because, man, do we have a lot to talk about today. How competitive can we be in this division? And, like, what's up with these trade rumors with Stephon Gilmore? Are they valid if they're not, man? And how much of an impact can this be on a defense? So, word on the street is, man, we got Carrion Johnson, former running back from the Detroit Lions. Uh, now, I don't know if that contract is guaranteed or not, uh, but I do know that with him on the roster, potentially, like this does make a crowded running back room, and it definitely makes it interesting to see um, like the competition for that third, or fourth, or maybe second running back spot going into uh, this summer's training camp. And the whole purpose of getting these running backs in this room is to figure out who can take the wear and tear off Miles Sanders, uh, who can be what we expected Jordan Howard to be in the 2019 season, and that third running back who plays more of their of that Darren Sproles role, you know, that scat back, the one who can catch the ball at the backfield and maybe uh, on some uh, running back delay. I honestly feel bad for Boston Scott because Boston Scott, man, um, I feel like people don't give him uh, enough credit for being as electric as he is. And I feel like uh, the amount of electricity this man has and his ability is very underrated. Like the man got, what, 600 yards all purpose last year. On 80 carries, I think he had like 374 yards. You know, he the man did his job. He has, he had almost four, uh, almost five yards of carry on the ground. Like very comparable to what Miles Sanders was doing during certain stretches of the year where he was averaging, uh, averaging like 6.3 yards a carry. So with the with the additions of Howard and um, Carry on Johnson and drafting Kenneth Gainwell, I'm definitely interested to see interested to see like how competitive this running back room is going to be and how they are going to impact this offense going into this uh, season. Because I think that we that we have the potential to have a top five, at least top ten running game in the league. How competitive can the Philadelphia Eagles be in this division? A division year after year, there's always some kind of controversy that leads down to a titanic week 16, week 17 matchup for a team to take the division and go to the playoffs. Even though we did have that outlier year in 2018 where we didn't win the division, got swept by Dallas, and still end up going to the division round of the playoffs. Uh, now, if we have a year like that, definitely won't mind um, as long as everybody's playing well and we're in good condition. Uh, but at the same time, like the Eagles this year have the first easiest schedule, well, first easiest schedule in the league, a combined win-loss record of their opponents, 117-155, 43% win percentage. So we definitely are in the catbird seat when you talk about strength of schedule. But Dallas is right behind us at second. And if you were to ask me or any other an uh, Eagles fan that thinks like me, like you would have to agree that Dallas had the better draft. They drafted they de the defensive player that's an that's an immediate starter that can bolster an already bolster linebacking core. And then Dallas got a lot of their secondary pieces. They got a lot of their lineman pieces. So Dallas is having the same offense that coming off an injury year, going to have to prove himself after getting that contract and the defense looking a lot better than what they did last year when they were like one of the most, more historically worst defense in the league. Um, so we definitely have very good competition with Dallas. Again, I think it's going to be very interesting to see, but um, I think that we can, you know, our defense is still better than theirs. So that gives us an advantage over them. And then our offense with Jalen Hurts, not having enough film on Jalen Hurts, and then just how electric Jalen Hurts is and the fact that we can run the ball against this defense that we still don't know if they're going to be good or not at that point because it's all still here and there at this point. You know, we can still run the ball a lot better than, than what we did last year under new coaching of Nick Sirianni. You don't know what to expect out of this new and revitalized wide receiving core. So I think it's going to be a very good competition between us and Dallas. Uh, Washington, even though they're the best team in the NFC East right now, just, like just from top to bottom, I still feel like them having the 15th uh, easiest schedule, which is like in the middle pack. So like a lot of their teams have winning records. So um, I don't think they'll have the quarterback play uh, like 
to get over the hump to really be competitive in the NFL. Um, but I would not be surprised if by week eight they're like six and two, seven and one. And that's going definitely going to scare a lot of people because, again, like Ryan Fitzpatrick is historically great against the Philadelphia Eagles. I don't remember the last time he lost. Like he lit us up when he was in Tampa Bay and he lit us up when he was in Miami. So um, definitely Ryan Fitzpatrick. The Giants, uh, they still have a lot more to prove. Uh, Daniel Jones has to prove that he can be their franchise quarterback because he is the main cog in that machine. So, um, you know, the Giants still got a lot to show. But it's going to be a very competitive division. I feel like the Eagles definitely can compete heavily for this division. Uh, I, th I feel like we have the tools to do it. Um, and I'm just curious to hear what you guys think in the comments. It's Stefan Gilmore, bro. Like, I think we can automatically have a top 10 defense because the stuff that Stefan Gilmore brings, the attitude, the accolades, you know, being a former defensive player of the year, man, like perennial all pro, pro bowler, man, and like not a locker room cancer. I think he's going to bring some, definitely some fire, some competition to the DB locker room and you know, just having him opposite of Slay, like, it's going to remind me of the days when we had Troy Vincent, Lito Shepard, Asante Samuel, uh, Sr., uh, man, Michael Lewis, Brian Dawkins, man. It's going to just take me back to those days, man, it's, if we can just somehow get that. it With the linebacker room we have and Alex Singleton, who's a, you know, who's a stud in my eyes, um, especially when he's... You know, especially as he matures, I think he can get a lot better. And then with Eric Wilson, uh, Sean Bradley, Davion Taylor, see what those guys still have to offer uh, in their second year. And with the still, like, rotating defensive line, uh, Derek, I mean, Derek Barnett, Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham, um, Josh Sweat, see how he develops in the second year. I think potentially we could have a top 10 defense if Stephon Gilmore is on here because that adds to the already amount of pieces that we have on defense. And again, I'm curious to hear what you guys think in the comments. But what's it all going to cost though? Because a lot of people say that this Stephon Gilmore trade isn't going to be worth a first round pick. I think it's definitely worth a first round pick, especially if you're trying to win now, especially if you're trying to go championship bound right now. Like it's definitely worth a first round pick because even if you do give up a first round pick, like you're still going to have like two. So, you know, um, but again, that's neither here or there. I'm curious. I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say in the comments, man. Like, do you think we could be top 10 and what's it going to cost? Like, again, thank you guys for showing up. Like, subscribe, and y'all have a nice rest of y'all's day.